thanks for uh, thanks for taking the time to do the interview. Um, maybe you could just introduce yourself to the community. Tell us a bit about yourself, how long you've been trading, uh, where you're from, that kind of thing. Yeah, sounds good. All right, let me just get this. Yeah, so my name is Jamar Ford, and born and raised in Toronto, Canada. Mm -hmm. And so I've been trading for three years and nine months, somewhere around there. Okay. Yeah. So I basically started trading July of 2020. That's when I started tra trading. Yeah. Basically, like a lot of four months. A lot of people. Happened. Yeah, a lot of people started about that. Time. Yeah, I think it was a huge influx into the trading community at that time. Yeah. So, yeah, what have you been exactly. trading mainly? So right now, I just been trading gold. I I just okay. been swing trading gold. That's basically it. Mm -hmm. I just stick with one pair. Yeah. Okay. Always a good move to just analyze the one pair and find how that one pair moves. Okay, so why gold? You, you like the volatility or, or what? Yeah, the volatility and swing trading only gold. I think it gives me enough setups just to trade only one pair. I think if I trade Forex, maybe like Euro USD or GU or whatever, I feel like I need to trade maybe two, three pairs just to get yeah. enough yeah, yeah, yeah. setups going. Yeah, forex is a bit quiet, isn't it, compared to gold and indices? Definitely. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And I just want to trade one pair. It just keeps me more focused on one. And oh, yeah. when I trade like two, three pairs, I I kind of get uh, a little confused a little bit sometimes. Yeah. And no, I agree. Focusing on one is yeah. enough. For no, me. I agree. I think that's. I think everybody should. If you can find one pair that suits your schedule and your you know your monetary requirements then just stick with that one i think it makes life a lot simpler um it's yeah so you swing trade gold did you say so you you're looking to hold what sort of period of time days weeks yes um mostly my setups they usually last sometimes like one or two days okay somewhere around there somewhere between 24 to maybe 72 hours yeah i would say yeah. Okay. So you're entering four hours. My yeah, four hour. I enter on the four hour time frame. Okay, four hour. Okay. And what are you? Yeah. What is your setup? What are they? Are you? What sort of trader are you? You're demand supply demand trader, ICT trader, retail trader guy. What What is your forte? Yeah. So I basically trade order blocks. That's okay. basically it. ICT. Okay. ICT stuff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I never studied ITC. ICT stuff. I've heard about them, but I just never dove into his um, videos. I just find them too long, too boring for me. So I, I, I just, <laughs> I just never yeah, dove yeah. into it. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what deters most people from ICT is his, his yeah. yeah rambling voice. But uh, it's good stuff if if you can if you can uh, bear the the length of the videos. But yeah, so order blocks. So you're looking for a basically an opposing liquidity run into some kind of supply or demand and then you're looking to buy off that or sell off that is that right it's basically it yeah yeah okay cool all right maybe you basically can, it. can you share a screen maybe show us the setup sure on the daily time frame i'm just looking for a daily bias whatever my daily bias is if i think it's going to go down then i go on the four hour time frame and i just look for an order block that continues that trend so, so how do you determine bias first on the daily? So on a daily, if I worry, my bad, I'm just trying to get this right. So on the daily time frame, I like to find order blocks on the daily. Mm -hmm. Or I notice all your candles are black. <laughs> yeah, I I, I I change them all black. Yeah, because oh, so uh, you don't you don't differentiate between up and down candles then, no? Nah. Well, for me, like the color of the candles is not important. I'm just looking for structure and 
candlestick patterns. I think that's more important than okay. seeing if it's like a green candle or a red candle for me. Mm -hmm. Plus I'm trying to, so when I trade, I try to remove as much emotion as, hum as humanly possible. Yeah. So when I remove like a green candle or a red candle, it kind of re removes those emotions. Like if I see a green candle, my emotion is going to be, if, if, oh, if I'm in a buy trade, I see a green candle, my emotions is going to be, yay, whatever. But if I see a red candle, my emotions is going to go south. So I just sure. yeah. change them all black. Completely universal. Yeah, I get it. Universal, get rid of those, get rid of those emotions. So that's mm -hmm. kind of how I trade. Mm -hmm. I learned, I got that from a trick from uh, a trader from a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but anyways, on the daily, so the way I try to find a daily bias is, so on the daily, I like to draw order blocks or 50% of the, of this imbalance or fair value gap. As you see, mm -hmm. I kind of drew this line right here. Yeah. And another thing I like to draw is weekly highs and lows. Mm -hmm. It's basically it on the daily time frame. So if you see here, this was trending down, down, down mm -hmm. on the daily time frame. So I, I, so I go on the four hour time frame. I'm just trying to catch a, a order block. So it was going down, down order block was created right here. So I kind of just drew it out, set a limit order. And once I, once I have my limit order in, I just walk away from the charts and let price go back to that limit order and then let price continue on its way down. Okay. Basically. So that's a sell for you because you're looking to target that 50% of FEG. Is that right? Basically. Yeah. So I'm just targeting okay. this. That's your liquidity pool that you're targeting. Why is it a sell? Why is that an order block? In so I have so, the way I determine order blocks is one, a candle that created imbalance, which is right here. Okay. No wicks here, no wicks over here. Yeah. And my second rule for order blocks is it kind of broke structure. Yeah. So I'll explain what I mean by breaking structure. Mm -hmm. So see how this came down. Yeah. This came up to me. Yeah. This. This right here is structured to me. Mm -hmm. And this candle is the one that broke through that structure. Yeah, close below it. Yeah, I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and so, that so makes the move prior to that some kind of order block, which is likely to be act, act as resistance if price comes back to it. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To, to me, those are my two rules for um, order blocks. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's one of the ICT rules. It must break structure, and that clearly does because it closes below a previous expansion lower. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, when, and when I'm looking at this, I'm not looking at the wicks. I'm only looking at the candlesticks. Okay. Bodies. Yeah. Oh, yeah, only bodies. I'm only looking at bodies. So this body closed above, and then the next body ripped right through mm -hmm. this structure area right there. So that, to me, that defines me as this entire order block. And so that's why I chose it. Um, put the limit order there, and then it came back down and nice. basically yeah. my, yeah, hit my TP. And usually my TPs are, I just keep it one to three. Mm -hmm. um, in the past, I would try to aim for TPs, maybe, maybe use some sort of daily target, such as like maybe the 50% for a value gap or this order block, I would, mm -hmm use it as a TP. But what I noticed is sometimes price would just come down, not even hit my TP and then reverse, which really annoyed me, but mm -hmm. it will be past my one to three risk reward. Yeah. You were just hoping for more. Yeah, sure. I, I was hoping for more and then <laughs> it backfires and then it goes back to my break even. Yeah, no, no, sure. Gets most traders every time. Yeah, damaging psychologically. Yeah, as well. Um, very, very yeah. damaging psychology. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now you're just looking for. You know, obviously you're looking for a, a draw on the chart. But if it hits your one to three before getting to that draw, you'll just kill the trade. Yeah. Yeah. Well, going forward, I just 
every trade I put on, I just I just won the three and I just go from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, that was this trade, TP. And now if you go back to this daily chart right here, it's sort of closed. Whoops. Let's go back here. So this is my perspective. So it came down, hit my TP, wicked through this 50% fair value gap, but closed above it. Mm -hmm. The next daily candle wicked again below it and closed above it, created a inside bar. Yeah. And, but it still didn't close below it. Mm -hmm. So that's giving me an idea of, okay, it's probably going to reverse. And then the next candle came, created a morning star pattern. So that's kind of, so those are kind of the things I'm looking for, for a daily bias. Mm -hmm. So you're bullish. So I see, so now I'm, I'm looking bullish. So now I'm going on the four hour chart and just looking for order blocks um, for bullish. So for example, this one right here. So yeah, so my bias is already bullish. Now I'm looking for bullish setups. This one, for example, this is a, uh, the order block I chose because one created imbalance right here and two, it broke this structure point right there. Yeah. So once it did that, that's when I put my, uh, limit order to here. And oops, let me just get rid of that. So it's the candle previous to the one that breaks the structure, yeah? Basically, yeah. Right. So I put my lim limit order here, hits it. I try to put a one to three mm -hmm. and just TP it. Okay, cool. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So those are the traits I took. Uh, I, I, so I keep on like these trades. Well, I didn't take these trades or where I put these in these, these are trades I missed. I just put them there for, um, reference points. Mm -hmm. So if I see like a similar trade setup coming up, I'll, I like to go back in the past and see like a, a yeah. previous similar trade. Mm -hmm. Same fractal. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So that's what I like to do. And this, this was November. Um, I find. So I'll say this, 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 so that was November, December, January, February was very difficult for me because let me go back to the weekly chart. I'll, I'll kind of show you that. It was a bit choppy, wasn't it for a while, but now obviously it's been quite, quite aggressive. Yeah, now it's smooth sailing. Yeah, yeah. but <laughs> this red box is from the start of December all the way to the end of yeah, yeah. February horrible price action. Yeah. Horrible price action. But this is what happened. So I, I started trading, I started swing trading gold in November, right? I built my strategy based off gold's 2023 price action. Mm -hmm. Gold's 2023 20, price action. If you look on the weekly time frame, what is this? I don't know what that is. On the weekly time frame, um, I would say in 2023, it was like 90% trending mm. in 2023. Yeah. So I built my strategy based off gold trending the whole time. Now, going back to this red area, this is not trending. This is just consolidating. Mm. So painful. But I built my strategy. Yeah, so I built my strategy based off of trending and it's not trending in this area. So yeah, yeah. I got completely wrecked December, January, February. Yeah. But, uh, now you're making up for it. Oh yeah, I was in huge drawdown. So right, right. Yeah. so I, I realized that that during this time, yeah, it was like very stressful and all that. But during this time, that's when I realized Oh, wait a minute. I built my strategy based off the market trending. I didn't put any rules in place where, what do I do if the market's not trending? So I had to redo my strategy based off the market trending and also the market consolidating. So I had to create some more rules in place mm -hmm. for 
when the market's doing both. So I kind of did that. And now the market is trending again. And so far, I've just been trying to catch trades going bullish, trying to catch order blocks going yeah. up, going bullish. Basically it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. So what did you put in place for when it's in consolidation? You just, what are the rules now? You need something to signal a, a breakout from a consolidation or what? Yeah, so this is what I put in. So I, and this is when I started looking into the weekly time frame. So on the weekly time frame, I'm looking, I only put in one thing. Basically, weekly highs and weekly lows. Yeah. And daily order blocks that, that are in the same area as those weekly highs, weekly lows. So I'll give you an example. So let me go back to the daily time frame. And so, so this area, for example, where, whoops. So here where I put M low, that means monthly low. Mm -hmm. There's a daily order block right here. Yeah. So what I decided to do is set a limit order in this area for this reversal. Oh, okay. So basically I'm trying to kill two birds with one stone. Mm -hmm. um, to me, where I see an area where it has two confluences, basically a weekly yeah. high or low and a, a daily order block in the same area, I'm taking, I'm just automatically putting a trade in there. Mm -hmm. Cause to me, that's like a high. High place to look for a reversal, high probability. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Basically, sure. so go, let okay. me show you uh, where that trade was. So yeah, the trade was right here on the four hour. So I kind of put, um, this was the trade right here where it kind of reversed and then kept going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's kind of what I did. Also this trade, um, actually, let me just go back and just align it up better. Oops. Okay, so we're back in this area right here. Another thing is this area has a daily order block and a four and in, so it's a daily order block and a four hour order block. This four hour order block is inside the daily order block. So that's another confluence yeah. I like to building, use as well. You're building confluences to give you a greater probability, sure. Yeah, okay. Basically building confluences, yeah. yeah. Nice, yeah, all right. I like your way you've, you've basically just built a strategy around one ICT concept and just, yeah, carried, carried with that, so yeah, nice. Yeah, basically it. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, so pre-gold consolidating for the last three months, my only strategy was just, just trade off the order blocks and trading the daily bias direction. Once gold started consolidating, that's where I added in another ICT um, confluence, which was the weekly highs, weekly lows mm, yeah. with daily order blocks. So I kind of put in another ICT concept. Yeah, I didn't watch ICT. There's just, I didn't watch ICT. I just found a bunch of, cause you know, when people watch ICT, then like a day later, there's like thousands of videos on YouTube <laughs> copying ICT. So I just watched one of those. <laughs> yeah. And then, so one of those, one of those kind of videos explained the weekly highs, weekly lows. I was like, oh, okay, let me just back test it. Well, they're just, I back tested pools. it, it worked. Yeah. Like any hard. Yeah. Just liquidity pools. pools. Yeah. Yeah. You can use them as draws. You can use them as areas for reversals. Yeah. It's yeah, they're useful. Any, any higher time frame, daily, weekly, monthly. Or even hourly, to be honest, to me, on what time frame you're trading. So, um, yeah, it's all fractal. It's all fractal, right? You know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks for that. Can you? Uh, how's the dashboard? Can we see that? Are you? How's the progress going with the? Uh, are you evaluate? Are you in the valuation or are you funded? So right now I'm funded with uh, only six k. So let me just okay go to the dashboard. That's oh, a fresh account at the moment. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, okay, so there's, there's no stats. If you got trading overview, I think. Um, trading overview, okay. But there won't be anything in there if it's a fresh account, so yeah. Um, Is it analytics? Was it this? Oh. Uh, yeah, that's your previous trade history, so. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure why it's not showing any details, but um, is it a new account? It says trading has not yet started. Oh, I don't understand. Uh, no, it's the same account. I've been trading this since, um, I think I got this account in October. Oh, okay. I don't know why it says zero then, so that makes no sense. Um, mm. Okay, don't worry. Don't worry. Um, anyway, you're happy with the funded next environment? Are you happy with the, the spreads on gold and the... Uh, what I presume you're using what, MT5? Yeah, using MT5. So far, so good. I'm I'm okay with the spreads. I'm swing trading, so I don't think yeah. spreads really matter yeah, for me. Not too, or... not too much of a deal. No, you're not a scalper, so you're not worried about the odd pip here and there. No, sure. Um, no, okay. but I used to... So, okay, so I only started swing trading in November. But the last three years, or three and a half years, I've been scalping or intraday trading the whole time. Mm-hmm. And then I guess a few things led to me moving to swing trading. But when I started swing trading, I realized, oh, wait a minute. I don't have to, I don't have to worry about um, spreads. I don't have to worry about slippage that much. I don't have to no, worry no. about, no. yeah, I don't have to worry about how much leverage a, a prop firm is going to give me because my, my lot size is going to be so low Yeah. anyways. Like to me, I could and trade with, um, yeah. like I could trade with like a one to ten leverage if a prop firm gives yeah, it to yeah. me. I'll be fine because yeah, yeah. I'm swing trading. Now it's a CFD prop account is great for swing trading because obviously you can hold overnight, you can hold over the weekend, much more flexible than a futures account. So, um, yeah, okay. All right, Jamar. Um, well, thanks for your time. I think we've taken too much of your time already, so um, you can stop sharing and we can part ways I think thanks thanks for your time and uh, speak to you again yeah thanks for that take care okay mate see you bye, bye.